Today we're going to line the closet with cedar. Some of you might be wondering why we're doing all our closets in cedar. Um, it is expensive and it does look nice, yes, but uh, the main reason is that the aroma of the cedar is a natural um, deterrent to pests such as moths or, or anything of the sort. Um, not only that, it gives a nice aroma for your clothes. And the third most important thing is it can help regulate moisture in your closet as well. Um, on the front of the closet, we're gonna have the uh, louvers on our bifold doors and the shelving that we're gonna have in here is gonna be wire shelving. That way the air can free flow all the way through this closet, especially since we're in Florida and it's quite humid here. It seems like the best bet to do. A little bit of prep work to do. Um, so I've taken out the shelves, I've taken out the bar. It was an older house, so it was a bit of a pickle. I had to smash it all out for the most part. And then uh, I scraped down all the surfaces of the drywall. shelves out of this closet. Um, we got to scrape it smooth. Basically we don't have to fill anything in with putty because we're covering it with cedar plank that's going to hide everything but we do need to take any high ridges off of here. I'll be somewhat careful because sometimes you can rip the paper up then you have to cut the paper to get a smooth finish. Like this. See now I have to kind of be somewhat careful. And no job is complete without proper cleanup throughout the steps. You leave it till the very end. Who knows what you could be stepping on. There might be a screw in there and you could be scratching up your flooring underneath your boots. All the closets in this house have uh, lights in them. So I'm going to take down the lights. Uh, these fixtures are old, but they're still good. What I'm going to do is uh, when I take the fixtures off, I'm going to spray paint them. Because nobody will see them at the angle that they're at anyways. Another reason to do this is we need to paint the ceiling before we put the cedar in. We could put cedar strips on the top as well, but I kind of don't like that look. I want the light to reflect off the white ceiling like it would in any part of the house. That way it lights up the closet a little bit better because the cedar will be dark. Okay, hey, now I'm going to go shut off the breaker so I don't need to let you keep this up. No? Did I get you? A little bit. There you go. I like to put the Mariettes back on just in case. But now if you look up there, it's ready to paint around it. Usually I have uh, poly or plastic on the ground, but such a small area and I'm going as slow as I can that uh, should be fine. Whatever I have to clean up, I'll just quickly clean it up with warm water and a rag if there is a mess. I'm prepped and ready to put the cedar tongue and groove into the closet. I'm going to do the back wall first here because I want it to be as tight as possible. Now you'll see some markings on the wall here. These markings on the wall are basically, the wall kind of changes uh, width as it goes up and as it goes down. So um, in the middle it's 55 and an eighth, in the top it's 55, on the bottom it changes again. I put casing or trim on the inside of the closet as well. That way we can have uh, an edge for the cedar tongue and groove to butt up against. It also finishes it nicely. The trim will be proud compared to the cedar tongue and groove. You'll also see up there I use a metallic paint from Rust-Oleum to paint the uh, light fixture there to reuse what we can, where we can. 
And as I said before, because no one's really gonna be seeing the light where the shelving is, this will work just fine. I'm gonna start at the bottom here with a cedar tongue groove. Uh, some houses aren't exactly perfect, so I'm going to put my laser in here, and I'm going to make sure that uh, my high end, if there is a high end, is where I start the uh, first row. That way I can lift it up a little bit on the other parts of the closet that might be off just a hair. So this is the high corner right here by about a quarter inch. What we'll do is level it off of this side and then everything else will be lifted off the ground just a bit. And then we're gonna seal it off with a piece of trim to push down the flooring and, and seal it up nicely. How we're gonna nail the cedar to the wall is you'll see there's a tongue lip on here, it has two sides to it. So the first board will be a nail in the bottom once it's level, and then a nail right at an angle going in so that you can't see it. And the next board goes over top, the uh, next groove goes over top and it completely hides that little nail. Um, we're gonna be using one inch brad nails for this, and then brad nailer. I got 18 gauge nails. Uh, we'll see how that works. We gotta make sure to find the studs throughout the wall, that way we have an actual backing to brand nail the cedar. Uh, looks like they're 16 inch on center, so to make sure the stud finder's working fine. Zero to 16 to 32 to 48. Perfect. Now we're just going to make sure the line is plumb and uh, draw right onto the back so we know. Where's the nail? The tongue and groove cedar is quite expensive. So to make sure I maximize every single bit of uh, the cedar here, I'm going to just cut it and lay it, as you see down here, or here, where it ends up. Um, I could calculate, which I did, uh, the measurement of from here to here, from here to here, here to here, and have all that uh, straight cuts, which also looks nice, but, um, but what it is is going to be closed covering it. Uh, I'm not too concerned. I don't want to waste uh, board feet or square footage of the cedar, so I'm just going to lay it this way. Wherever it ends up, I carry on. The good thing is, is that the tongue and groove, if let's say it ends up here, this is being held by the top board as well anyways because of the tongue and the groove. So it all works out good. Um, if you're really concerned, you can also stick glue behind here. But since we're nailing into the studs, there's no need to uh, waste money on the glue. You want to make sure that as you're going up, you keep checking your level of this, because with the uh, small tongue and groove marks here, there isn't that much for correction if you get too far out of whack. It's definitely coming along quite nicely. What I did for a uh, baseboard is I just ripped one of these down into two halves and then uh, put it on top and bottom. Give it a nice clean look. I ended up going all the way to the back side and this is the old light repainted with metallic paint and just cleaned the, the uh, bulb for it. Closet number one finished, five more to go. This cedar goes really well with the flooring. Look at the transition up there. 
We're at the point where we're going to be doing the clothes hanger rods and the shelving. Standard height for a clothes hanger rod is 68 inches, 5 feet 8 inches, and it's 10 inches back to center. Um, yeah, so I'll show you how we do it on the other one. Um, on this closet, I already measured uh, 68 inches up, 10 inches over. I screwed the uh, first side in. What I'm going to do is I like to use a laser level. Um, we usually don't work on new construction, we work on older houses, and even though it's a quarter of an inch or something of the sort, it's better to be as perfect as you can when it comes to shelving and rods. So I'm just going to use my laser level here. Watch your eyes. And I already have 10 inches out of the dot. And I'm going to go to the bottom of that bracket. where the bottom of my bracket goes. Center it to 10 inches out. And bring it down to there. I always finish screwing it in with the screwdriver so I don't strip the wood. I'm about to cut the clothes hanger rod. I made sure when I measured in between the brackets that I put on the, the holders that uh, it's as tight a squeeze as I can get in there. Um, the tighter it is, the better it is. As long as you can lift it up to get it out of there, that's all that's important, but you don't want to slop around. Just snug. See that? I'm going to be putting two shelves in these closets. Uh, the bottom one's going to be 16 inches and the top one's going to be 12 inches wide. That way you get a little more room when you reach the top to get your boxes on top of it. Um, the first 16 inch shelf is going to be two inches above the rod. So I'm going to go from the top of the rod Give me a rough and dirty two inches right here. Now what I'll do is I'll grab my laser level and make sure everything's perfect. If you don't have a laser level, um, put your line across here and then put another line with a level across there and then just use your hand level. But laser levels are good in business. Be careful with your eyes when you're around the laser. Here's the line that I put two inches above the top of the rod. And I've already marked a 16 inch dot out here. So I'm going to go line there. And of course, try left handed. One here. One here. And then I'm just going to put one little one in the center once I've stopped shaking my hand here. Now I'll do the other side of the closet. Next step, we're gonna measure the length of the shelf from one end to the next and uh, cut them up. This wire shelving comes with a bunch of hardware and brackets, one of which is a little cap to hide the end that you've cut off. So I put the caps on first side I'm going to measure off of anyways and then also there's a bracket to mount the front as well. So between the thickness of this bracket here which is 1 8 inch and just a hair for the uh, caps 
I'm gonna call it three eighths when I account for both brackets and the caps on both sides. So three eighths of an inch off my overall length that I have measured for this shelf to begin with. Be sure to cut on the proper side of your line. If you cut on the side that you're going to be putting in, you'll lose an eighth of an inch or whatever it is that the width of your blade is. Now we'll just clean up the ends and put the caps on. Before you stick the plastic caps on, make sure the metal has cooled. We are going to drill holes into the wall where I put those pen marks. There is drywall behind the cedar and the way that uh, Closet Made, which is the brand of the shelving and brackets that we're using works for these, is you drill the hole in, push this in, and then you're going to hammer this pin in, which is going to expand the back side here. And uh, yeah, since there is drywall back there, instead of screwing it in, I'm just going to use the hardware they gave us. So the first thing we're doing to put on this shelf is uh, that line that we drew with a laser level, or if you don't have one, you were to drew it with a um, <clears throat> handheld level. We put the back of the shelf to it and screwed these brackets all the way along. So we made sure to evenly space these brackets so aesthetically it's pleasing as well. So now that we have a uh, perfect back line, we know exactly where we can drill our holes for these brackets right here. So even though we have a level line already drawn, I'm going to grab a two foot hand level. And from the back of the shelf to the front, I'm going to confirm that this is level. And it is. So this is where I'm going to make my mark to drill a hole. Now that I've drilled the holes for this bracket to go in, um, in the proper spot for the shelf, I'm going to mount it. Pull the pins out of these expansion pieces here, and we'll put the pins in after the fact. It's easier to hammer this in without the pin first. And here are the pins that we'll put in. And now, we have a perfect shelf. I'll just finish up the other side, and we're good. And now for the last piece to hold up the center of the shelf. This looks about center. So we hook it underneath there. We'll put a screw down here. And our first shelf is complete. Looks pretty. So I've decided not to put an upper shelf on there. Um, a little bit of consideration. I took a look up there. And in order to get that uh, 12 inch shelf up there, that means the boxes are gonna come up, or clothing or whatever, and the angle that it's gonna have to make is probably going to pop the popcorn ceiling off the ceiling. So I've decided the best just to have this shelf here, more than enough room and access to the top shelf. Turned out pretty good. So that finishes the tutorial for our cedar closet.